Welcome, everyone, to the December edition of Conversations with Archbishop Kurtz. Welcome, Archbishop. Well, thank you, Brian. Isn't it amazing? Here we are in December, the month of Advent, getting ready for Christmas. Yes, Advent season is really special. That's what's going to be our topic in just a minute. We're once again taping here from the Pastoral Center, our, our new facility on Popular Level Road. We talked about it back in the November show. Um, we'll probably be back in our studio, but we like going on the road a bit, and that's why we're on the road again today. So, Advent is our first topic. Archbishop, Advent uh, uh, has lots of different memories for people and stories for people. It's, it has some religious meaning and, and some holiday meaning with it. Tell us about Advent. Well, you know, I, I guess I often think back, uh, Brian, to what St. Bernard of Clairvaux, one of the early Trappists, uh, talked about. And, and he, he talked about the three comings of Jesus, uh, the coming of Christ that we're all familiar with, the first Christmas. Yeah. So we always look back, to both actually during Advent and the Christmas season. Uh, secondly, he said, Christ comes to us today. And, and so the need for us to be living in the present and to be aware that, that the coming of Christ is not something in the past, but it's relevant for us this day. So how is Christ coming to us? How in Advent are we preparing for that coming within the circumstances of our life today? And then, of course, the third is Christ will come again. Uh, the coming at the end of time, the Christ has come. It's, they, people say, already, not yet. Yeah. So it's both already Christ has come. He's, he's in my heart. But he has not come with completion that will occur at the end of time. So St. Bernard gave us that good understanding that, that, in a sense, we look to the past, we look to the future, but we also welcome him in the present. And, and that's what we need to do during the season of Advent and, of course, the Christmas season. You know, Advent gets overshadowed by Christmas preparation. So yeah. people tend to see Advent's what you're doing to get ready for Christmas, which isn't bad in its wording, but in fact, it seems to be all the energy is going to December 25th. It is, it is. And, you know, uh, th th that's why I think it's so important for us this year. Uh, uh, Christmas will be actually on a Monday. So it's important for us to celebrate the season of Advent fully, including the fourth Sunday. All four Sundays. Which is the, 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 literally the day before Christmas itself. In some ways, that's, that's very good because the thought of anticipation, mm. of waiting, we all know what it means to wait, but no one waits like a child getting ready for Christmas morning and what gifts to open. And, and that sense of waiting for the Lord to come into our lives is uh, essential to the season of Advent. How about, how about from your youth? Did uh, your family celebrate Advent? You know what? Uh, here we are publicly, I'm telling you, we never had an Advent wreath or, or anything at home. But I'll tell you what we, we, we did. And I often think about this. Uh, of course, we went to church every Sunday. I love those candles. I love waiting for the purple and then the pink one on the third Sunday okay. uh, yeah. would be done. There was always a white candle in the center, and I always figured out, why, why don't we ever light that white candle? I can still <laughs> remember that. Because uh, come the fourth Sunday, and I always remembered this, the fourth candle, the purple candle, would be lit, and there would be the smell of Christmas trees. I don't know if there were pine trees or spruce trees in the church, but they were trees that were already in the church, but they were not yet decorated. Anticipation. And it, and yeah, it was anticipation. And it's funny how um, uh, with the sacraments and sacramentals, there's, there's seeing, there's hearing, there's even the smell. And I could, I could remember the scent of the, the evergreen tree yeah. that yeah. filled the church, which yeah. is, is, uh, is kind of a boyhood uh, remembrance that uh, I guess needs to be kindled up in me every Advent. Uh, How about you? Well, aromas, as you reminded me, aromas uh, for Advent, for me, is straw. Now, let me tell you our story. Uh, my good Irish mother, we, I, I came from a large Irish family, nine children, and my mother liked the penitential nature of, of uh, Advent, like Lent, because Lent, we had to give up stuff and do things. Keeping some order in the home, right? And so she did this for, she did this for Advent, too. So for Advent, everybody had a shoebox next to their bed. And every day, you were kind of evaluated. And if you were good that day, you got a, some pieces of straw put in your shoebox. And if you weren't so good, perhaps you got a couple of pieces of straw taken out. Oh. And the goal was to get as much straw as you could. And on Christmas Eve, everyone would have a um, accountability activity. They'd bring all of their straw for, to lay in the manger for baby Jesus to put his head on. So each one of the nine children would present their straw. So, wow. so it was a, it was a 
it built anticipation. But so the straw ended up going into the manger scene itself. Exactly right. Wow, oh, that's um, beautiful. And to this day, as you talked about the tree aroma, when I smell cut hay or straw in the fields, I smell Christmas. Uh, even though it's earlier than that. Well, Brian, your, that. your your shoebox must have been overflowing. Uh, no, not, not, not really, not really. <laughs> <laughs> My sisters would tell you something okay. different about that. Okay. That's a wonderful so, story. Though. That's one to, uh, And I, I hope people who are watching uh, maybe will think, well, now what, what happened as I was growing up? And even young people today saying, here's what I really like about what we do within our family, to share that with one another. We, we, had, we had the Advent wreath, and what I try to instill with my own children, and Catherine and I were raising them, is to do something to practice Advent, yeah. because it's so distracting, distracted by the preparation for Christmas. Okay, penitential. Talk about, because I mentioned that, it was my mother's goal, but yeah, how about that? It's, 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 it, in some ways, when we think of penitential, we think of Lent, of course, right. and it's true. Uh, the fasting and the, Jesus fasting in the desert. Uh, but Advent has its own penitential in the sense of uh, the penance of waiting, of anticipation. So uh, the image of the child who can't wait to get up in the morning in order to, uh, to open up his or her Christmas gifts. Well, there's, there's a sense of anticipation as we look in, in a wider way that, that Advent is both not only the coming of Christ, but the reconciling of all creation. So whatever is incomplete in us, whatever um, uh, needs the, the, the grace of Christ to flow into the section or corner of our hearts, and that could mean, oh, anything from a resentment that we feel or from a hurt that we received. It, it could be some separation from a family member or, or a problem with someone at work. Whatever it might be very specifically for this time is meant uh, in that sense, penitential. It's meant to bring together that waiting spirit uh, to allow the grace of Christ to reconcile, to bring together. And, it's, and it's, a, it's a beautiful time for us. And just running around for Christmas gifts doesn't, doesn't do it. It needs to have some reflection. We use some of the same colors because it's still the, the we vestments do. are purple and the candles are purple. We do. That's so exactly purple. right. So, so there is there's really a, a, a great anticipation. And, and the readings of sacred scripture, yeah. Brian, that kind of connect it, uh, well, we hear from the prophet Isaiah. Mm -hmm. we, we, we hear, of course, about John the Baptist as the precursor of Christ. Uh, in the beginning of the first few days of Advent, of course, it's much uh, deeper. It's much more about the kingdom of God to come. As we get closer to, of course, the actual feast of Christmas, the solemnity, then we get into the very specific uh, uh, days right before uh, Christ was born. So the, the readings of sacred scripture allow us to walk with our Blessed Mother, with St. Joseph, with Elizabeth, with John the Baptist. Uh, the figures of, of sacred scripture come alive in our hearts. I, I think some of the most recognizable uh, Old Testament readings come from Isaiah, yeah. and because they are, are so richly um, expressed during the Advent season. Absolutely, so that's absolutely. A, we, we connect with those things, and that's a, that's a very beautiful thing. And the way in which uh, the church is decorated, the, the, environment, the environment is yeah, done, you yeah. talked about that a little bit, and I did too, with the, the Advent wreath, <clears throat> is meant uh, to, there's a certain, I would call it noble simplicity. Uh -huh. It's, it's meant to be uh, something simple, but it's something that ought to be slowing us down. Yeah. Slowing yeah. us down so that we can prepare not just for Christmas this year, but also for where our life is going, yeah. Yeah. where the fullness of life is, is entering into us in Jesus Christ. I, I liked what you said earlier, particularly about anticipation and with children, because that's the time you can help teach children about the coming of Christ uh, getting ready for, like we get ready for gifts. It's not just the gift, but it's the preparation that's part of that story. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, uh, Christmas done well moves us out of ourselves. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. gift the gift is good, but, you know, a lot of times families will, will be involved in uh, a gift given to a neighbor. Yeah. You know, this is a great time for generosity. People, yeah. uh, right after Thanksgiving, uh, people will maybe participate not only in caroling, but they'll also participate in visiting uh, uh, individuals in a nursing home or perhaps helping uh, people who are homeless, uh, knitting uh, gloves and, and hats. Uh, all those activities uh, move us beyond ourselves. And that, that is the movement of Christ's grace. Yeah, that's that. terrific. Yeah. That's terrific. Yeah.
Thanks everybody for being with us for this first segment of our December show. We're going to come back in a few minutes and Archbishop will interview a special guest, our Director of Youth and Young Adult Ministry for the Archdiocese. And then in our third segment, as is our tradition, Archbishop's going to bring an Advent Christmas message for all of us. Be right back. <music> 